said, I did this research actually through prayers, meditation, fasting in Oakland Hills. I spent weeks and months actually fasting, trying to understand some of the things that our ancestors had said. Okay, now, uh, my name is Dr. Ankara, and I got into this area because my father had once told me, that, you know, you've been distinguishing yourself in your classes everywhere, people are very proud of you, but I'm not going to be proud of you until and unless you are able to take everything that you study in school to prove to me that the black man is the original man and that the language, the G language, is the only language on earth. Mm -hmm. I said, now wait, old man. <laughs> I mean, it sounds, and then he said, and he has an expression, you know, when you see that means he's very serious. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm talking something very serious. So he gave me this assignment and uh, I was always trying to figure out you know, how do you go about showing that one language is the only language on earth when in fact you're hearing all these many languages coming to you. And this was uh, the research. So I went through school, I went to United States where I got my BSMS, PhD in engineering, studying computer sciences, engineering various branches. And then I went through the law school where I received the masters. But I spent most time doing this language research, not even on all the degrees, because my father had given me this assignment and I wanted to do it before he died. He said he wanted this fact to take back to the ancestors. So when he goes, he'll be able to give them the message. And in fact, I, I want you to know that I was able to do it and get my first book out and brought it and showed it to him that I had done it. <laughs> Happily or sadly, he said, now that you have done it, I have one more year to go. And I said, now, to, to go where? He said, to go to the ancestors. And so, he said, Judas, this is the last year, this is the last month, and then the hospital bed, I said, now we're going to go home Monday. He said, no, I'll be going tonight. Mm -hmm. I said, going where? He said, a little bit, I'll be there. I said, no, nah, you, you know, you're weak, and, and that's why you're saying that. He's laughing. He said, well, if you don't believe it, then I'm leaving now. He turned to the wall, and he was gone. Mm -hmm. But this research, in giving it to me, he had also told me that we have entered a period in man's history on this earth when the black man is going to get up again to be liberated. You know, liberating the black man means liberating mankind. You see, when you enslave your mother and your father, what are you doing? Mm. You're keeping your very life survival information. And this statement I've just made is a very serious one. You know, in this neurolinguistic, this is a new science of uh, language that I have created called neurolinguistics. I thought somebody was going to bring a, a felt pen. Okay. Uh, now the research confirmed the black person as the original inhabitant, the language as the original language, but I said that if the black person is the original inhabitant, the tree and this group, the particular group, the, from the work of this uh, black Egyptologist, Professor Ben Yakena, mm -hmm. you know, some of his work actually showed that the papyrus of Hunifa, and how the ancient Egyptians defined their origins, and all goes back to the tree language. So my point then was, you know, what my father had told me, how do I show that if the tree is the first, what happened, how did all the other languages come in? Now, I do know that because man got stubborn, God split the language. Uh, that, that was a very important point because what that meant was that at some point in time, 
the brain was interacting with the whole universe in such a way everybody could speak one language. Mm. Mm -hmm. Then, after the disobedience, he switched the computer mm. to the div diversified mode. Mm. So the brains will no longer be viewing things the same way. And came all these uh, uh, various uh, languages. So I started by going back to the, the, what people have really said about the alphabets, about various languages. And when you go to the alphabets, we have I'm writing. Now, in the Chi language, we have A, B, D, E, F, G, H, I, K, U, N, O, O, P, P, R, S, T, U, W, Y. Now, see, our ancestors were very religious. I'll later define for you this word, a person, you know when I have gone through the, the subject. And they will tell you that you are a person only if you worship God. Mm. See? So this alphabet, A, B, D, A, F, the creation is a thing of beauty. But what are they teaching today in all the universities? Are that these alphabets are just mere sounds to make words. But you see, you know, like I was saying, our ancestors were highly religious, and they don't just pick up sounds to just make words, and then further they will tell you that the words that people speak are arbitrary. In other words, at some point, a group of people will agree that we will call this and this, and it becomes uh -huh. that man somehow started as amoeba and growing, evolving as an ape, and one day said, hey, I'm a man, <laughs> and started, you know, imitating sounds and using this, creating his own language. Uh, what I have found is to the contrary. Our ancestors were highly religious. They selected these symbols to tell the story of the creation. A, B, D, A, F, -E. the creation is a thing of beauty. G, H, E, K, O. Son, God, Ra, this, God, this is my soul. Me and you are all equal. Ra, Se, T, U, W, Y, E. God wants you to know that He is your origin, your beginning, and your end. So, when you go to school, after, during those days, so in P, we have a statement. Wu Nim. Ah, you don't know the letter A. You don't know even the alphabet. You see, if you go to school, and you learn this thing without knowing the story, how God wants you to know that it's your beginning and your end, that the creation is a thing of beauty, and these uh, uh, vowels here, a, E, O, O. What does that say? A, E, O. Praise, all praise be to God. You got such beauty in language, in the alphabet, but they're not teaching the right thing. And when you start discovering this, this is the beginning, I'm telling you. you are, we are going to be discovering greater and greater things in the years ahead. When you start to know this, when you start to know uh, that the brain was not just evolving, God said, let us make man. Mm -hmm. And he made man and put the capability to speak language in his head. Yes. Man didn't create language. Mm. God put the language in his head. Right. Now, when I go through this, then I found out that words that you use are actually from this program. Now I have this uh, word here. So that these words I find that are not arbitrary. The brain as a computer. Now I'm going to how we get the multiplicity of the language. How we get it. And uh, here. 
If you see, I have here lemon, lemon, lemon. So right now, when you say lemon, you know uh, you are calling this thing, this thing in my hand. But the question is, why they call it lemon? Perfect. And the reason is that the brain saw something about lemon, your interaction with the lemon, and the computer program actually goes through a whole series of questions. And over here, in fact, I have identified the actual computer program written in the tree language by our ancestors left on an atumpan drum message. You hear people playing drums. <coughs> it contains the computer program of the human brain. All the intricacies of it and how it finally comes out with this word, for example. So what does that mean when you say uh, lemon? We call it in tree, anka, garia, the type of lemon that you use to take a bath. But the English people, another language, you see, they call it lemon. Why? Because the computer saw their interaction with lemon. That says, yeah, monk, don't stink. Use this thing. <laughs> As, and, and in here, a lot of <laughs> women and people use it under your armpit and so forth. And then it deodorizes. Mm -hmm. So you use it like that. Now, so you see that while somebody is saying Ankaidari and somebody is saying lemon, they are only giving you information about their experiences with that particular uh, thing or item. <coughs> now here, this is fresh ginger. Ginger. Now we call it in tea here. Oh, wonderful. Okay. We call it a ka ka dro a e ka ka dro. The thing that is medicine for toothache. Mm. If somebody get toothache and you chew a little bit of it and you let it sit in it, it will relieve the pain. So when we first came into contact with ginger. We were using it to relieve pain of toothache. So we call it akakadu. But when the English people first came in touch with it, ginger, ginger, what they were impressed the most was how hot the type of ginger they had. They said, it's so hot, it's like fire. Ginger. So you think that he's speaking a different language, but the computer is giving you only information as to how the ancestors or the speakers of a particular language reacted or interacted with something in the past. Sure. Now this, I want you to be able, when you go, to remember these things. If indeed you don't remember, that words give you information about the things that you are naming. They are not arbitrary. Hmm. They are falsely teaching it all over the world today. And hopefully the time is coming and the time is up because when you start to know this, it's going to lead to a lot and lots and lots of uh, discoveries that would be coming later. Now, some other people call this in some other languages, I believe the Zima. That's when Uzisimwayemere. How you translate that, Kwame? Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> It's the sea is the waste. Mm -hmm. Mre is uh, weakness. So that uh, the thing you apply when you have a weak waste. Uh, yes. so well, you okay. are, are wasting strength. Okay. So. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. that's what it is. He broke it down and said that the waste, when it gets weak. In other words, there's some activity people do that mm -hmm. they tend to mm -hmm. move their waste. 
And when it gets weak, you strong back. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Then you use this. You match this either alone or with some other spices. You insert it in the rectum. I'm not giving. Uh, what do you call it? No, I'm not no, giving any prescriptions. That's right. Uh -huh. And then it will heal, you know, the waste, or it makes what it is saying that that word is here, even though that's the way you translate it. But it specifically <coughs> refers to men, mm -hmm. men potency. Right. That's what it means. So you use it and you improve the potency. You add another herb to the record, and then it improves your endurance. You know, it's all in here. So when you see, remember them. Now I know y'all paying attention. Uh, money, you know. We call money here Sika. Uh, you call it money. They call it cash. In Accra, they call it Sika. And then so forth. And you, you, you get, uh, I will let make sure you, you get it. The, one of the books that I, I get the language in all the different uh, places and how they call money. I just put down a few. Here, Sika. We call it Sika. Why? Somebody is calling it. Somebody is calling it. Why? Because the computer, we saw that C, it ends dead. When you owe people and you get this thing, you no more owe them, you can give it and your debt is wiped off. Now, the English says, Ka she. When you give it to somebody, it burns away all your debt. Now, why then they also call it mo money, mo name? Yeah. Okay. Oh, she said it. That's wonderful. You see, she got it already. So, money, yeah, is something you give to someone that has done something good for you as a thank you uh, a gesture. So, the brain saw that sometimes. It wasn't because you owe someone that you gave the person money, but because the person had done something good for you, and then you give it as a reward, as a thank you gesture. So you are, and then of course the Ga people say she ka burns away debt, just the same as the English people. So remember that all these multiplicity of languages are coming from a brain computer. And the way that you interact with the object, the way that you see the thing, the brain then goes through an elaborate questioning and asking of questions, and then it comes out with it. Now, in this book here, I have outlined the program itself. I didn't write it, our ancestors wrote it, and I translated the passage you know, some anthropologists from Britain had translated it, and some other people had translated it. But when you look at it from this neuroscientific point of view as a computer, then lo and behold, you see the program asking all the questions that you were asked. So that man was created by God with an actual computer program to enable you to speak language. So the question is, creation or evolution? Mm. Obviously, it's creation. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, we are entering a phase of our existence when God is going to be supreme. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not preaching. I know. And, and you know, I've been sitting there saying, I don't know how I'm going to interact like somebody was nervous, you know, with all the pastors. But I said, now, you know, this work, I started with prayer, with meditation. And here I am, like when I last met Minister Brown and the um, St. Paul's Community Baptist Church, Reverend uh, Young Blood. And I said, yeah, 
God has sent you another group. And I am so honored to be standing before you, communicating this. And all the time that I was sitting there, you know, it, it wasn't like I had prepared, you know, fully the speech or what. It was more, I was saying, uh, you know, what do you want me to say, God? <laughs> I mean, you know, say. And here I put this thing together. I want you here, this, this sheet will tell you the word diaspora. You hear brothers and sisters mm -hmm. in the diaspora. But what's the meaning of it? You go take a dictionary, and it says it comes from some Greek words, uh, spirit meaning to sow, a dia meaning true. Uh -huh. What are true to sow got to do with calling yourself true to sow? Now, you see, de, yasi, po. We are a people in a state where our roots are about to get lost. Wow. You see, when you put this word in the computer, uh -huh. diaspora, now you're saying that your roots are about to get lost. And as long as you use that word, the computer is going to ensure that you will make sure you don't lose the, those roots. So we are all meeting here on the soil, on the ancestral soil, today. And then there are a lot of other meanings that are expecting that word. And uh, a word then, as I have said, contains all the experiences. And I want to show you uh, this one. Because today, the word democracy has become so important all over the world, you know, democracy. Democracy. Yeah. A form. So, you know, when you know this, the definition of every word is right before you. Mm -hmm. It's inside the word. And it tells you at the time the people, now this is very important, listen to me carefully. When you look at the word and you break it down, the information that you get refers to what your ancestors thought or felt at the time they came into contact with a particular system, with a particular object, and the brain computer, asking all the questions, then came up with the word. Mm. And so, the mo krakoye is a form of government. It, before you do something, you inform the people mm -hmm. before you go do it. You seek the permission of the people, and then all the there are other three, four other definitions, all of it in, in democracy, where, okay, there are other definitions, you know, in democracy, I have listed all of it inside this, and um, as I said, I've been doing this thing, after I'm, all my PhDs and LMS and so forth, I've been devoting all my life to this thing. And for the past 10 years, I have been in Ghana to complete it. And um, after living in the United States for about 20 years or so, and when you come into this area to do this, it gets really difficult. I mean, it got difficult to be able to devote yourself to this kind of research because I've not been supported. Right, yeah. By anybody. I use my engineering, get some work, get a little money here, and then I continue. And I said, oh God, what am I going to do? Because at the time, my daughter was about to go do something, and I thought I needed some cash. And I said, oh God. And a friend came and said, look, trust in God. It's, it's, it's going to get you something. Uh, you know, sometimes I have absolute faith in God. Sometimes you kind of tend to shake. And where is something going to really come from? Yeah. 
So she said she was going to the cultural center to do the traditional dance. So why don't we go? I said, well, let me go. So I go sit down there, and then I see a group passing by. And I saw somebody was in a straw hat, man. And I said, now what's that group? I walk over there, and I meet this gentleman. I said, who are these? So that's a group of tourists from United States. I said, hey, can I talk to them? You know, maybe we can share, and maybe they'll be interested in this. And he said, great. I will introduce you to uh, Minister Brown, the man in the straw hat. But before he introduced me, the man was, hey, what's going on? Tell me about it. And I told him, and he said, come on tonight. And I spoke with them. They bought some book. She was able to get all that she needed to do her passionate <laughs> Today, you know, it's been like uh, testimonies you're hearing. I'm yes. giving it to yes. I had just been praying that, God, I mean, I've got to get some help somewhere. Mm. And when I saw Minister Brown, it was the answer. Because from that time, if I had not met him, mm. I don't know what we would have done. Mm. You know, because we were in serious trouble. Mm. And then he brought the uh, Reverend Young Blood and the community. In fact, they provided the money with which I made this book here. This time when he was coming, he also brought substantial sum of money from Reverend Young Blood and the department. And I want to give him a hand. One, two, three. And incidentally, in October, uh, a group over in America is going to put me on a speaking tour. So I'll be in the United States to lecture in different uh, places. And if you are interested, we get together, uh, you may let us know when they are going to the computer class that your ancestors wrote the program. You know? When you have God created man, and you are not an amoeba or a monkey that just got up and fell in with a, a, a man, or woman, that the alphabet is a holy, sacred information. When you recite it, you're not just making sound and uh, let your kids know that you answer. The ancient Egyptians were the first people to be established in the modern, historically modern times. Egypt or Ethiopia was the first country in the world at which time there were no boundaries in any part of Europe to be called a nation. Now, who were these ancient Egyptians? My research has proved that the genuine ancient Egyptians who were there, who built the pyramids, thousands of years before the first group of white people became civilized, in 580, the people we now call the Greeks, who are claiming origin of, of knowledge and science. Before they became civilized, the people we now call the Akan, they were living in Egypt. And they built the pyramids. Now I'm going to use only one aspect of the whole research to prove that the Akan were the original ancient Egyptians. And that is the word Amen. It's an Akan word. The word is not Amen, as you say, but actually it's Amen or Amon. Now those, you, uh, you may be uh, sorry to know, to, to know that you coming from uh, the United States know more about ourselves than those of us on the, in the motherland. Yes. Uh, it would be difficult to find the average Ghanaian who knew that Amin referred to the God of Gods in Egypt. We don't know it. Even <coughs> our professors don't know it. That's not to say that they are not in books they can read. 
but our education does not allow us to read things that will enhance our own dignity you know, and give us more confidence in our own selves. Yes. So, uh, with you, you know that Amen or Amon referred back in ancient Egypt to the God of all <coughs> the gods. When the Bible says, uh, the, 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 the community of the gods. Now, Amen. And at that time, the God he worship, his name was used as the seal of the prayer. So in Numbers, Moses tells the Jews, now, if we pray, you should answer Amen. It's a prayer in the Bible. Now, that is the reason why the Jews worship the God now. <laughs> But answer their prayers in Amen. I want you to know that up to today, there are people in Ghana here who answer their prayer with the, the, in the name of the God Yao. Yeah. And these are the people of the Accra, Accra people, the Gans. <coughs> when they pray, yeah. they all shout, Chua, 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 Manyaba, and they say, Yao. Yeah. <coughs> uh, the, the name Kwame, which is my name, is Kwa and Amen. It means the servant of Amen. All people born on Saturday are supposed to be in the in the in the service of the God Amen. Now, so this word Kwa actually means servant, and it is used as a prefix to all the God and the names of the days. Among the accounts, we had this seven days a week. The calendar that the whole world is using today comes from Egypt. Hmm. It comes from Egypt. And the accounts have maintained this calendar up to today. We gave names to the seven days of the week. And when the white man came here, you were using the seven day a week calendar. See? No. I mean, it's good. That account he's talking, the, the language I'm talking, the tree. It's also called Akan. So, so the Akan language is what I was talking about. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Now, we know that Kwame is servant of Amin. Now, this Amon, also referring to the God, is uh, seen on the Ghanaian television every day. Every day. But the average Ghanaian doesn't sit down and say, ah, where does this name come from? And how does it relate to my origins? Now, from Amen, actually the, the word Amen and Amon are names, surnames in Ghana here. Now, we have another name, Ja. Amen. Yes, I agree with the boy, Ja Amen. Now, <laughs> Ja Amen means accept Amen. That is, in the situation you are, only Amen can help you. <coughs> yes. Yes. The guns still need this word Jah. I mean to accept. Accept Amen. Now after Jamin, we have Ja Amen Ra. And the reason is that this God Amen had an a sobriquet, an appellation, Ra. That Ra referred to the sun. Yes. And uh, because the sun was the symbol of God at that time. So Jamra and Jamin are one and the same name. This being the longer form and this being the short form. It means except Amira. See, that's the only Amira can help you. Then we have Aminama. <coughs> Meaning Amin has given you as to say, a child. When you get a child by soliciting the God Amen, we call the child Amen Amen, or Amen has given. We have the name Amen Yao. <coughs> Made up of the names of two gods. Amen, the God of Saturday, and Yao, the God of Thursday.
then we have Amenfi. Afi is the god of Friday. And so um, uh, Amenfi means uh, it's made up of Amen and Fi, the short form of Afi, the god of Friday. So the names <coughs> of the oh, gods Amen Fi. Yeah. So uh, the names of the days, the days were actually named, named after gods. I mentioned it. Yes. The one uh, Ashanti king was Kubia Menfi. And there was uh, another king in the Fanti land called uh, Asim Amenfi. So Amenfi is actually a common name. Now, we have a people called the Bronze in Ghana. Up to today, uh, during the annual festival, they sing a song. Yifri Amori. Yifri Amori. Samankama. This uh, name Amon is the same as Amenra. Amon, as we know, is the same as Amen. And we refer to the sun. Now, and uh, accounts too. Uh, the other, when we are performing puberty rite, we sing as this song. We say, Ye, 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 Otiri Amponye, Edwasio, Edwasia Mino. That uh, God has answered our prayer, that uh, the child, uh, the girl that we got is now uh, a woman. So we thank you, O oh, Amen, uh, uh, that uh, you have answered our prayer. So with this, we may add the fact that there's the shrine of Amori among the, the uh, the people of the bronze up to today. And uh, uh, putting all these facts together, you see that the word Amon or Amen is an Akan word. And uh, in fact, it's a Ga word too. Because the Agans use the name Amon a lot, just as the Akans use the name Amon. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. We were here before everything else that has transpired began. We shall be here when everything else changes and we take back our positions as the regional dwellers of the earth. I, I become very much happy when I listen to this, these two great men. I see these two gentlemen as very great men and I know that in God's own time, he shall expose and elevate these two men to a certain level where human beings shall wonder. And that will be a day when I shall say to people, Oh, I know Dr. Ankara. <laughs> and they will say, Oh, stop you, Joe. <laughs> but then I thank God that at the beginning, he linked me to these very great men. And in all the works they do, we of Journeys and Starline have an, in an intention to fuse them into most of our programs. I mean, if your visitors are to visit this country, one of the constant things that they would hear if they came to Kumasi, apart from visiting the cultural center and probably shopping to the drop at the three crab villages, is a lecture from Dr. Ankara. Yeah. Because I believe that it was, like, it was like hearing some good news. When I heard it, I thought, no, this thing must be heard by all my brothers and sisters, especially brothers and sisters in the diaspora. So this is, in a nutshell, um, some of the things that we put into the tour to prove that we don't only create a tour for leisure purposes. When African Americans are coming back home, it's not a time to lie at the beach and bask, or to turn, or to have fun, or to swim, or to, to do all kinds of evil things that people have dubbed tourism. Our kind of tourism is a meaningful thing. It's a visit back home. It's like people who have left home to go and seek. And after finding, they have to come back home to plant. And we believe that what we have done this evening, interacting with each other, will strengthen you. You will convey all these things to your church. And then after that, when they, came, when they come back, they will also enrich themselves. You have enriched yourselves. Although you thought you were coming to a farm tour, I believe you have realized that this has turned out to be more than a farm tour. And I know that you've all learned a lot. 
there are lots of things too that um, I would like you to do to support Africa. When I'm talking Africa, I'm talking Africa from the Africa I know. And as far as I'm concerned, God has, at the moment, sh um, shown his face on Ghana as a land. There has been so many um, problems of the length and breadth of the African continent. The northern part, southern part of Africa, eastern part of Africa, and even in the western part of Africa where we are sitting now, brothers are dying. That is being shed right now as we sit here in this cozy place and we are talking. But God has shown his face onto this land because it is a blessed land. Yes, it is. When God brought the idea of uniting his mm -hmm. people in this land of harm once again, he chose a child from this place called Kwame Nkuma to lead this thing. Here was a selfless person who could stand and tell the whole world that the independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the African continent. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is not true about this? And why does he deserve to end up the way he ended up? But if we look through our history books and through our religious books, we realize that all the prophets of God, he assigns a certain duty unto them. And once they finish the duty, he calls them back. <laughs> so that if Kwame Nkrumah is not alive today, we all know where he is. Mm. And one day we believe that we shall meet him. In a nutshell, we have come to the end of all the intentions we had for today. So we open the floor for you to bring up your comments and ask any questions that you have had up for since, since you came right after the address of the African woman. Uh, we noticed uh, in our travels through uh, Cape Coast and uh, Accra and even here in Kumasi that the African women cover all of their body uh, and, and, and opposite in the United States our women are beginning to take everything off. What is it that we can go back and tell our women that you've told yours that uh, is keeping in, in keeping with this tradition? Okay, I'll do the Praise the Lord. In the you know, uh, again, we go back to Akan language. Akatesia. It's uh, translated literally is cover to hide. Oh, also cover to hide. Cover to hide. And if you are adolescent, you have to cover to hide. You don't have to expose your body. Mm -hmm. So again, in a can, and our mothers try to teachers right from beginning. But you see, again, if you come to the Kumasi Ashanti, they have their traditional dressing, and that's the dancing grind. I mean, the Nash, uh, how do you call dancing grind? It's their traditional way of dressing. <laughs> they have headgear, and then they cover part of their chest. But then they cover the down part. But that's their traditional dressing. That used to be. But then when cover shoulder came, you see, it's cover your shoulder. And this is what we have now. There, have, there has been some transformation all the time. It wasn't like this to begin with. But gradually transformation all the time. And this is cover your shoulder. So we now cover our shoulder. We used to wrap around, not sewing slit. But as time goes on, you see, uh, we, what is fashion? But then we insist on dressing properly. And that's how you cover yourself to hide for your future husband. Let me say something to this. You know, when she goes to this work, and when you become a lady, nice lady, they call you a Ketesia. And it says, cover to hide yourself and cover totally. Now, once this word is given to you as your name and put in the brain computer, you are going to do that. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes uh, to, to help people, you have to look at the type of language that the people are using and insert better ones. Mm -hmm. And then you will really help. 
I must confess, I'm really surprised that you are praising or you are adoring because we in the forefront, so we feel that we are copying a lot mm. from the outside and we are becoming a bit worried about it because our girls, our women are not dressing to the taste of the Ghanaian people. Mm. So we are a bit worried. And you're right to worry. Yes. You're right to worry. So but rather than worry, pray. <laughs> so in our women's ministry, you know, we try to talk about it. Uh, like, I I don't like talking about fashion when I'm talking because I keep on saying that there are so many things in the Bible they have to learn, you know, know a lot. But then occasionally you have to come out mm -hmm. and then tell them. Mm -hmm. to Thank you. Mm -hmm. Push them. I'm just so glad to be here with my family, and I. And I'm I know your sister. Okay. I've seen your sister. Praise as the Lord. As soon as I saw you, you know, you look exactly like a friend. She's in a refugee camp. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I truly really thank God for being here. This is a very important trip for me. Take the time. We're with you, darling. I left Africa at the age of 10 and I went to the United States and I returned when my father died and I've been in the United States for about maybe 19 years since my return to Liberia. However, God educated me, blessed me, anointed me with no mother, no father, no sister in the United States. God made provision and he made a way. He planted me in a home of a bishop and a, a, a missionary who guided me through my education. And I received my divine call from God and I went on to seminary school where I've been blessed. I didn't have a dime, I didn't have a mother, I didn't have a father, but God made a way for me and I often ask myself, why was I chosen? I will never be able to answer that question. But the Lord blessed me tremendously. I'm not saying this because I want to show off. Because material things means nothing to me. But when this great man died, before his death, when I went to his hospital bed, he says, I'm going to do something for Africa. <clears throat> And he left me in charge of certain things. I don't understand why he did. I, did, I never could understand why it happened. When, he, when I was chosen to be in charge of two churches in Richmond that was bought and paid for, church in Brooklyn, and all of these things. But the Lord allowed me to be educated and go on. And about five months ago, God had been dealing with me I travel extensively through the United States doing conferences, evangelizing. I pastor for 13 years. The Lord spoke to me and said to me, I am sending you back to your people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and I'm just so glad for this joining Unlimited that, and, and Pastor Gors for allowing me to know about this trip. Hallelujah. That I, on this time, I was able to come back to Africa, not to see Africa, but to find my people. And, and I'm so glad, I'm so glad. I, I don't know if my sister knows me, but I was hoping that somebody would know, you would know where she is. But when I got the word they were in a refugee camp, I know God is able. But God has given me a vision to come back to Africa, to open up an orphanage, to uh, to uh, to open up a school and to do things. And I want you to know, I really don't have to do a whole lot of fundraising because he's already made the vision for the, for the, the provision for the vision. Amen. So I'm just saying that. I'm, I, my mother used to call me the same name, but I, I just thought, what kind of name was that? But when he introduced me to his daughter last night, the name came back to me. And I said to Ben, I'm taking my name back. Hallelujah. 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 Hall
So I want you to pray my strength in the Lord, and I want to say to all of my sisters and brothers that, hallelujah, that love me, you pray for me because the conference, and let me tell you, to show you how accurate God is, seven months ago when God gave me the vision on the New York conference, Pastor Gauss, the last conference we had in Poughkeepsie, was host at her church. And we raised funds for Africa, not even knowing we're going to be here. So God has already been making a way for us to connect with the right people to come and do the work that God is giving us to do. And to conclude my statement, she and I have already spoke about coming back with a group within 15 to 18 months, sponsoring to come back to teach our people the truth. And we do a lot of praying, but before we pray, we go to the root of the problem. And since last year, somehow the Lord, you know, gave a vision to our leader, Mrs. Regina Gozo, that we should pray for the sons committed by our ancestors 400 years ago. And she gave us this picture that our own people sold our own people. Yes. And when they were going, they were weeping carefulness. So we have to pray for forgiveness yes. so that they come back. So your coming here is a game, a miracle, because we've been praying for forgiveness. We've linked so many problems we are facing now to those particular things we did. And I'm glad that the Lord is answering our questions, our prayers. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's Amen. very interesting. Work at the last moment, but he plans to come back. God willing. As a matter of fact, we plan to bring our church back. Um, we're always at the date for August 7th of, eight, of, of 98. God willing. And I mean, I just came here to confirm it. And I just praise God for what I feel. And I praise God for what has been said and what I've been able to experience. And I'm going home, going back to where I'm living now to come back home again. Filled with the fire and the Holy Ghost to be able to teach, help to teach my people there to know where their people are here. So that we can journey back here. And not only journey back, do what we can to help our people here. Because God needs us to help one another. And it was just not by coincidence uh, that we're here, all of us. And I hope that we feel motivated to do something. Because if each of us can do what we can, I, I, I just praise God for your family, for this hotel. Yes, and to hear you, you know, give God the praise who deserves the praise, and you, you're willing to give it to him. You're not trying to accept it for yourself, but to God be the glory. Yes, and I look around and see what's all around here. I say, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. While I'm standing, I want to thank God for our sister, our sister Maria, Amen. who's amongst us. God, she's here for a purpose, too. And she's been very much a part of us from the very beginning. God's got a way. Because we're all his people. And to all people are free people, nobody's going to be free. we got to have divine love. So I know that through her, she's going to be able to share something with other folk. And when we all get together, yeah. hallelujah, as one people, yeah. hallelujah, what a time. ...on this trip, uh, how it has impacted you and... Um, in terms of uh, the churches coming here, what would you recommend? I would strongly recommend that the churches from America come back to Ghana, the homeland of, um, of Africa, uh, the place where we really got, uh, we have so much connection mm -hmm. uh, prior to coming here and never realized the vastness of instruction or the vastness of um, of richness that this land has in, in particular Ghana and uh, and um, down by the castles uh, and also here in um, Munasi mm -hmm. uh, Tomasi and um, I'm glad the Lord has blessed me to come right when I go back home to St. James Church of God in Christ in Middletown New York I'll sort of be sharing with them all of the tidbits that I've gleaned from here. And I'll also be suggesting to my other brothers in the Church of God in Christ around the world, our presiding bishop, uh, Bishop Chandler David Owens, will be informed of this trip and I'll just be sharing as I go on and trying to come back and especially for this beautiful hotel that we're at here in Manasi and um, 
also the other events that we experienced on this trip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your name is? Uh... William Vest. Mm -hmm. And you are who? I'm pastor of the St. James Church of God in Christ in Middletown, New York. Also, I oversee the Catskill District.